Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. In the Epistle to the Romans, this morning we heard St. Paul really giving some good prescriptions for life and how we should relate to others and to the world around us. In one of his verses he says that we are to uh, show, show uh, affection to one another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another, to treat others, of course, really better than we want to be treated. To show that affection to all people, it doesn't give a uh, disclaimer on who that might be and which people we should sing aloud or which people we should choose not to treat that way. Later on, he says, of course, we know these lines, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. And how hard that is for all of us, unfortunately, to treat others around us the way we want to be treated. There's a story from the Desert Fathers of Abba Makarios. One day he's walking from Sketis to Mount Nitria. And he said, tells his disciple to walk on up ahead of me. One was to avoid idle talk, which they labored hard at doing. And as he was walking ahead, the disciple saw a pagan priest running in front of him across the desert. And the disciple, really not following Paul's words, yells out, Hey, hey you devil, where are you running? Well, the pagan priest takes exception to this and takes his staff and beats him half to death on the ground. A little while later, the pagan priest proceeds running and he comes across Abba Makarios. Abba Makarios sees him running and says, May God save you. May God save you, you weary man. The pagan priest was floored by this. He goes to him falls on the ground before him and says, Father, what good did you see in me that you were so cordial to me? He said, I saw you toiling so much that you did not know that your toil was in vain. So he felt compassion for him, even though he was a pagan priest, even though he was probably going to something that was no good. He proceeds to tell him how he had beaten his disciple half to death and that he would find him up there. Macarius talked to, talked to him some more, of course, about Christ, and the man says, I will not leave you until you make me a monk. But Macarius makes him a monk. And he, him, the man, the pagan priest, no longer a pagan priest, but a Christian monk, goes on to convert many pagans to Christ. Why? Because he was shown a good word. But Macarius says that an evil word makes a good man evil. And a good word makes an evil man good. He says, the, fa the fathers say in the same writings that when someone insults us, when someone curses us, we should immediately give them our blessing. And if they receive that with humility, then good has been done to both. But if they do not receive it, of course, you have saved your soul, and the other will answer for his own insolence. It's not what we seek, of course. We seek to change them and to convert them. How often we spend our lives in anger with the world around us and with things that we can't control and blaming others for attacking us. Evagrio says that the one thing that makes us the most like a demon is anger. A shocking thought. We become drunken with our anger and our rage. We are in not control of our own souls. We allow others to be in control of our souls. The only purpose of anger, the fathers teach us, is to fight evil, to fight the demons. It is never, ever to be used against another human being. Never. But that doesn't mean we don't raise our voice. That doesn't mean we're not firm. Notice Abba Makari was converted to man. Notice Jesus was firm with people. It was out of love, but absolute compassion. How often ours is not but it is protecting our own so-called rights. St. John Chrysostom, in his commentaries on the Psalms in one place, with the line, be angry and sin not, says that it is better to be possessed than angry, because the possessed don't necessarily go to hell. Now think about what he's saying about anger. How often we get angry with those around us, and for what? We should be feeling sorry for them, not for ourselves, because they are doing damage to their own souls. 
what St. John Climacus shows that the measure of the spiritual life is the way we bear insults, not our prayer, our vigils, and our fasting. Of course, those are necessary for that, uh, to leave those out. How do we do? Do we feel sorry for the other, or do we feel sorry for ourselves? When we contemplate the passion of our Savior and see Him crucified on the cross, how is it that we can possibly think, how can someone insult me? How dare that person say that to me? How can they be so harsh to me? As if we have no sins. Our pride takes control of us, like we are not worthy of correction. Or insults for that matter. As Isaac the Syrian said, if God was just, we would all be struck down on the spot. He's not. He's merciful. So we must show mercy to everyone around us if we want to see that same mercy. When we bear insults with humility, we gain the kingdom of heaven. When we gain control of our own souls, and we don't waste our energy pouring it out in bitterness to someone else in remembrance of wrongs. It becomes an idolatry, our anger, because we don't, we aren't able to pray. Because we're focusing on our idol that other person in our own pride. And this is bad. This is not good. One of the saints that is celebrated in the Synaxarian today is St. Theodotos of, the, of Glintz, of Glintz Hermitage in Russia, who lived, of course, in the 19th century. And he was a very simple man, worked in the kitchen, actually slept in the kitchen. They never gave him a cell. They would hear him in there doing more prostrations more quickly than any of them could possibly do and praying all night long. But people were harsh to him. This was a bad time in the monastery. The, the cook was even a layman at the time. They didn't have enough monks to take care of this. And they were brutal to him. They would beat him with sticks, insult him constantly. But they would always see him laughing and joyful. And even when they would do that. And this is part of his sort of feigned foolishness. But yet... He realized what was happening. He was the gaining the kingdom of heaven. He was bearing in his body the marks of the Lord Jesus, as Paul says at the end of Galatians, because he was becoming humble. Most of us don't have to bear with that kind of thing. But we can't even bear a little word that we don't like from our spouse or from our family or from our friends or from our co-workers. And we lash out and we lash out. In the process, we lose our souls. It should never be. The Silvan the Athenite, the famous story, talks about this Archimandrite that had come and was telling him about his process of going out into the world to convert other people to orthodoxy. And he came into these Roman Catholic country and he was preaching to them. He said, well, what did you say to them? I said, well, you're heretics and you're going to burn. Well, why did you say that to them? He said, they reverence God. And they said, yes. They believe in the mother of God. And yes. They believe in the mysteries. He said, yes. He said, well, they have all that right. Couldn't you have started from there? Yes, they're wrong on those things. But, other thing, but, why bash them? Nobody's ever won with hatred. The only one with love, as Abba Makarios, in the first thing. People need to be corrected, undoubtedly. I need to be corrected. We all need corrections at points. But it should be done with mercy. And if, when it is not done that way, should we be able to bear it with humility? Because only the humble into the kingdom of heaven. Humility is that self-knowledge. We are aware of our own weakness, of our own frailty, and we become angry with others about ridiculous things, or even not so ridiculous things. <clears throat> we hurt our own souls because we don't realize that we are sinners. We do not really believe when we say of sinners of who I am the first. Because if we really believe that, we'd be able to take anything. Because we have died in this world before death. We have died to ourselves. We have died on the cross with Christ. We have died in baptism. And those things should be real. Evagrius also says in one place that he who becomes angry is an absolute madman. Because he loses his connection with God. One cuts himself off with anger and harsh words immediately from God. He said it's like somebody that has an eye problem taking a metal stylus and poking himself in the eye. It's a harsh image, but it is reality. It's nonsensical. So if we realize the damage that anger causes us, we should see it in our own lives when we look in the mirror and see how we're acting and how bad it makes us feel. 
cease this immediately because it separates us from our prayer. It separates us from God. And it lasts how many, many, many times, myself included, how many times over the years with confessions, and we're talking to people in churches, I've seen people lose their prayer, stop coming to church, sometimes permanently, because someone insulted them. They realized how ridiculous they're being in the grand, grand scheme of things, because it truly is ridiculous. As if we were the greatest thing that ever walked the earth, we were the Savior himself, who bore the insults, who bore everything with humility. But yet people do this on and on and on, every day. Somebody says something bad, and I get mad, and I'm not going to talk to that person anymore, and I'm not going to church, and I'm not going to talk to these people. How dare they speak to me that way? If we hear ourselves on a tape, we'd be mortified. Because we sound worse than impetuous children. In fact, children often forgive better than we do. But that's what we should remember, it's childlike faith. When Abba Macarius says, may God save you, may God save you, you have to realize in monastic culture, we don't say that enough, perhaps we should. It was a greeting. It's a greeting that they use, and they still use in some monasteries. It's not saying anything harsh. It's better than saying simply hello or goodbye. Even though goodbye has good roots too, and God be with you, if we only remember that. But to say, may God save you, is a great blessing. That's what we should be saying to the world around us. Not literally, and certainly in our hearts, to everyone, may God save you, because we desire the salvation of all, especially our greatest benefactors, those who show us who we really are. Because we have to realize when we feel insulted and we see something bad coming up at us, those people that blessed us by holding up the mirror and saying, there is who you really are, and who you think you are, you became angry at such a little thing, that is what you need to repent of. God bless those people for giving that gift to us. So may God save all of us by teaching us true humility, to show us to be kindly affectionate to one another, to prefer one another with honor, and to bless those who persecute us or even perceivedly persecute us. Bless and do not curse. Amen. Amen.